Hi there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your April 2024 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. Sun and Sagittarius Gale. Let's see. Oh, okay, well, there you go. I was going to say, you know, when I do these readings, I'm, I'm rooting for myself as well as anyone else. So, um, you know, this is a big month, as you've probably seen other astrologers, I think I'm going to be doing a, uh, not lunar, but solar eclipse video because it is such a important thing going on, uh, with the solar eclipse in Aries. And of course, Aries is a fellow fire sign. So that, um, gives that positive support as well, you know, uh, from the trine aspect. And of course, some of the people will not have this trine their sun or whatever you're watching for that's Sag, if it's the ascendant, but usually uh, I'm going to pick an additional card here. Okay. So, um, I put my phone on pause and it ended up, uh, <laughs> I ended up stopping it. And so I had to start a new file. Um, the heart of the matter is the star card. And this is faith and unseen forces, number 17, but actually the 18th card because the fool is zero. <laughs> but anyway, um, faith and unseen forces, what does that mean? Well, I think, I think Sages, Sages are known as prophetic or, uh, that, that kind of thing. You know, the sage is Sag. And so I think Sagittarians in general are comfortable with the idea that, you know, everything isn't on the surface. Everything isn't visible. That there are things that are from the invisible realms that have, in order to be made manifest, they start in that invisible area. Um, there's a wonderful writer and I guess you, you know, she probably would be considered a mystic and she's a Sag and her name is Anadia Judith. And she wrote some classic books on the chakra system. Uh, two of them wheels of life was the first. And then she had a follow-up that was about psychotherapy, Eastern and Western traditions. Very good too. And they delve into different, aspects of the chakra system but she also had a book on manifestation and <laughs> it's funny because i read the introduction and then i couldn't i misplaced the book but even in the introduction i always remember her saying that that what i just said that the that when we want to manifest something when we want to create something it begins with an idea and so that is intangible that is uh in the invisible realms and then it is brought down to the physical so that's how we manifest things in the physical so we start from the invisible and we go down you know people think the lower chakras are those are unenlightened and those are bad and the upper chakras are good that's a simplistic way of looking at it. We need the first three chakras to navigate this world. So anyway, um, the star card can be about things of that nature. As a matter of fact, I think that some of you will be coming up with an idea um, that has to do with making money. Because I was thinking about that solar eclipse in Aries, which is officially happening on April 8th. And it's going to be at 19 degrees of Aries. And that will fall in the fifth house of Sagittarian. Sagittarians. And the fifth house is Leo's domain. So it's a firehouse. So firehouses, we can talk about creativity. 
that's one of the key points. Love is one of them, but in terms of creativity, the business that you own is also the fifth house. So coming up with the, that kind of an idea. The star card is also connected to hopes and wishes. It's connected to the sign of Aquarius, which rules the 11th house in astrology. Another, by the way, another friendly angle to Sag as a sextile. Now, um, in terms of hopes and wishes, this might be a time when you're very hopeful, especially like hope restored. Like you, you feel as if maybe you've been through a very tough period and now you're emerging and you're feeling that your hope is restored in something. This can even be receiving assistance from crossed over loved ones that are helping you. In the past position, we have the Queen of Wands. And I. this card is actually connected to uh, Sagittarius. You know, one thing that I am so happy about, because usually the Queen of Wands will show like a, a sunflower. And the reason that I'm happy that it doesn't show a sunflower is because the sunflower connects the sun connects with leo and maybe it is something to do with what this what leo represents with confidence because that's part of what this card is all about but from what i have um read this card is connected to sagittarius but um both of the queen represents water and the wands represent fire both of those elements are emotional in their own way um personal and impersonal emotions. Um, impersonal emotions are more like passion for certain causes and ideas, which is what the fire element is all about. So really it can be about coming from a place of maybe experiencing hardship in some way, um, or having to rebuild your confidence and now you feel as if you're able to thrive to succeed the higher message is eight of cups leaving behind what no longer serves you basically how i see this card in the context of these other cards is that maybe you're going to be um and, or maybe this is something that you should do. I, I don't like to shit all over people because I know that, um, well, I personally don't like to give advice. Um, I don't feel that that is appropriate for me to do. But what I would say to look at is, is there something in your life, Sag, that you should be releasing at this time? One thing about that fifth house, we can like, Forget about whether that eclipse is sol um, solar or lunar. It is a solar eclipse. But even some of the way other astrologers interpret eclipses, it's almost like uh, something shifting. So that could be ending um, in this area of pleasure. Sometimes This is one of the houses that's associated with addictions. I... There was another astrologer that was talking about addictions and mentioned another house, which I had never heard uh, being connected to addictions. I think it might have been the sixth house, which I was shocked and amazed because that's a house of health. But yeah, the fifth house, it's about pleasure. And as we know, pleasure can be addictive. Now, some people can say, what's wrong with pleasure? There's nothing wrong with pleasure as long as it doesn't control you. So the seeking out of pleasurable experiences, if a person is under control with that, they're not going to be, um, it's like a hungry ghost. There's, there's a term in Buddhism, hungry ghost, meaning that the person is haunted by their um, attachments and they can't really, they're not really at rest because they're always seeking new attachments. Somebody with an addiction like if we talk about a drug addiction and, or, you know, it could be, you know, alcohol could be included in that, but that idea of like being compelled where it becomes compulsive, that's not being free. 
you know? So anyway, um, and there are such things as soft addictions, uh, caffeine, TV, there are certain, or internet, um, and they might not be that soft in some cases where they may require a lot of, you know, uh, willpower to make it happen. And, and maybe you have to do it gradually to wean off of it because there may be something that is kind of getting in the way of what it is that you want to accomplish goal wise. And this is kind of, um, it's funny because this is the, the card that crosses you, the six of wands. This is a card of, um, recognition and getting those positive strokes from others, but maybe you're blocking that Sag. Maybe you're, I'm using the word self-destructing. They might be a little bit dramatic, but, um, if you're not doing what your hopes and wishes are really, you know, what you're yearning for and you're like getting distracted with things that are very um, superficial simply because you're not, you know, really present with what it is that you want, that can lead to uh, feeling uh, or um, I shouldn't say that can lead that can stem from maybe not feeling like you're worthy of it in some way at a deeper level. I think that Sages with the queen of wands, you're starting to build that self-esteem to a greater extent, but there still may be something that you need to kind of let go of. And with that solar eclipse, I think that it's going to be easier in the fifth house. It's going to be easier to accomplish that goal because, and by the way, you know, if you're a sun and Sag like me, your natal chart may look really different in my natal chart because I have a late degree Taurus rising. I have very big 12th and sixth houses. And so the eclipse is falling in my 12th house and that can be a house of, you know, um, self undoing, uh, you know, like self destructive patterns and it's a house of addiction too. So if you have your, your, um, that eclipse in that 12th house, that may be also still relevant. <laughs> uh, it might look a little bit different, like the backstory and the motivation, but the end result can be the same. Um, if you would like me to analyze your chart, speaking of that, I would love to. I've been doing a lot of Sages in 2024, it seems like. Um, so, and pardon the train because I live right by the, the train and it's rush hour. So, let's see. What is coming in is the three of pentacles. This is a great card for money. So that might be something that is uh, good for you in uh, the month of April. I would say two with the number three corresponding to creativity. Maybe you'll make money from creativity. And again, with that fifth house, um, Aries, that's where... Um, Jupiter was for a while, for a year. And some of you may have taken advantage of that. So, some people, um, and that could also be for love as well, but maybe it's more affairs than, than actual like flings. Um, now Jupiter and Uranus are both in the sixth house. So the fifth house of, I'm the reason I'm bringing this up is because Jupiter is one of those planets that can, represent money and it's in a more practical area, but it was in your fifth house last year. And maybe some of you did already profit from something creative that you began. And, you know, we did have a Jupiter retrograde. So maybe you put something on a shelf. Um, one astrological event that's coming up that will be in this fifth house that 
um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's in the sixth house that involves Jupiter. Is Jupiter and Uranus coming into conjunction? It will be in play, I think, even at the end, end of March. It might even be right now. I haven't checked. But it's going to go through, I think, even early May. Where the, where the planets are close to, to one another. So they're a conjunction, but the official conjunction conjunction is on uh, April 20th. So that will fall in your sixth house. And that can be because Jupiter is one of those planets that can uh, be connected to money. With Uranus, it might be online. Things that you're doing, work that you're doing online, Sixth house can be work, what I call service to others. Um, so if you have started some kind of a business, maybe it is slow to take off and then all of a sudden it explodes. Uranus can be something unexpected, um, lightning striking, you know, which means that something is really just, maybe it's going viral or what have you. It also can be, this can also be a card of, generally good for money, but it can be teamwork in the office place. So that is a possibility too. Um, okay. So I picked outcome cards. And one of them is the Ace of Swords, and you see kind of that illumination in that pineal gland, you know, the third eye kind of re region. Well, the third eye is between the brows, but I, I think of it just, I mean, even if you saw that as the crown, it's really not, I don't know if that was the crown chakra. But the point is it's about higher knowledge or higher wisdom. Um, Ace of Swords can be new ways of looking at something, maybe perceiving something. Um, so going back to this idea of starting a business or any kind of creative project that might also be monetized is that you may have had a certain way of thinking about it that has changed. I remember when I first started my business in 2015, I was really amazed because I had no intention of starting a business in the first place. I never wanted to start a business. I never wanted to make videos. I thought it was crazy that anybody would want to do that. And it just goes to show you that anything can change. So when we have rigid ideas, obviously we don't allow space for something else to occur. So two of swords also came up. And so that's why I picked an additional card for clarification, but the two of swords, it could be being at the horns of a dilemma. Maybe, you know, you have this idea that the ace of swords represents that you really are, um, interest in implementing, but you can see doing it in two different ways. Um, so I picked an additional card, page of pentacles. So when we are talking about pentacles, we're talking about messages. I mean, uh, <laughs> pages are messages, but pentacles is about money, earth stuff, you know, usually about money, possessions, jobs, the body. Um, so, I mean, this could even be being a student. Some of you may receive a little bit of money. Uh, I don't know how. It doesn't matter. The universe can provide it in many different ways, and you may use that to train for something because you feel like it's important for you to get a certain training before you embark upon the next phase of your plans. Um, some of you may receive some kind of message about 
a job or money. And so going back to that star card, your wishes can come true. Or maybe it's not um, about a job. Maybe it's about money that you have coming to you. And that can be that can be something that you were wishing for so much. But think about like that eight of cups, because that can be the spiritual quest. So it can be like, what do I have to, you know, what can I give up that it's not a loss? It's really about something that's going to benefit me in the long run. All right. That's what I have for you. You guys, you Sages, I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I am primarily an astrologer. Most of the readings that I, private readings that I do are astrology based. And I have uh, a double reading called Deep Dive, um, which is especially, I think that it's a great introduction for people who've never had a reading before. It's an hour of natal chart analysis of your chart an hour of transits, upcoming transits for the next 12 months. And it's a, a special price because those readings are sold separately and they, you know, they cost more by ordering them separately, but they're a great package deal. And I have other readings as well. You can find out more information at the link below. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your April 2024 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. Sun and Sagittarius Gale. Let's see. Oh, okay, well, there you go. I was going to say... You know, when I do these readings, I'm, I'm rooting for myself as well as anyone else. So, um, you know, this is a big month, as you've probably seen other astrologers. I think I'm going to be doing a, uh, not lunar, but a solar eclipse video because it is such a important thing going on uh, with the solar eclipse in Aries. And of course, Aries is a fellow fire sign. So that um, gives that positive support as well, you know, uh, from the trine aspect. And of course, some of the people will not have this trine their sun, or whatever you're watching for that's Sag, if it's the ascendant, but usually... Uh, I'm going to pick an additional card here. Okay. So, um, 